Uh, nothing like a nice rant on a nice sunny Sunday in New York. <laughs> so, ever since this Meghan Markle thing, it's going to be a calm rant. Ever since this Meghan Markle thing, the, the topic of who is black enough, what is black enough, has been coming up a lot lately. And now, when I talk about race and stuff, I always talk from the, the standpoint of being a black woman. Black women, because I believe, and I believe that this is fact, that the priority should be on dark-skinned black women, um, especially members of the LGBTQ community, community, because those are the most unprotected class of people in the society. And so when I speak about black women, I say black women in general. But today I'm going to talk specifically on my experience as a mixed race person. Um, growing up as a mixed race person, I remember <clears throat> just not, I, I remember feeling like I was just this impure mix, something that should not exist, something that should not even be a thing. I was mad. I was mad at my black side. I was mad for even for being black at all. I felt like I didn't belong at all because there's this never ending pressure to be black enough, Hispanic enough, this enough, that enough. Or if you speak a certain way, you're you're the white, you're the white black girl or all this and that. And and you know, when you're when you're growing up, you don't really know about colorism, but as a mixed race girl, all I knew is like I felt like there was something wrong with me. And it took me until my 20s to fully come to grips with everything that I am and who I am and everything. And, and the thing about whiteness and blackness is that it, this is a system that was created by white people to separate people because they didn't ever intend for there to be mixed race people. You feel me? Like people like me weren't meant to be a thing according to how the world was supposed to be to them but the but since the world didn't work out to the way that they thought that they could control it to be now we're here in this predicament where people are like are you black are you mixed are you black enough at what point are you black enough to call yourself black and you know they talk about megan and everything and megan to me i'm like you know we're both mixed we're both half black um, she's half white and then like my other half that's not black is just a mix of you know uh, European and um, and Native American and all that so it's like and to, like to me like she's sometimes some of her, like she kind of has some more afro some more afrocentric features than even I and I know that I can come off as ambiguous a lot but a lot of people you know it's kind of split because a lot of people are like you are obviously like very very black like you're obviously black like you know there is no question and I'm like why is that why is that is it because I speak a certain way is it because I use AAVE in a lot of my videos um, and what qualifies as being black enough how many Tyler Perry movies does Meghan Markle have to have been in to be considered black enough how loud does she have to be about her blackness to be black enough um, is it not enough for her to simply just exist in this world being who and what she is because i can tell you from personal experience that it's probably enough to just you know exist and have to go through certain things but it's like what is black enough what are these like it, these intangible qualifiers that we've put together to determine if somebody is black enough what is that because you know if you walk through the world looking a certain way um, or if you walk through the world with a certain heritage that came together to make who you are, like who is anybody to discount that part of you? Is there a pay? Is there like is there a price of pain and suffering that we have to pay to be black? Because ironically, like that's definitely something that has that's been created by the white supremacist society that we come up in. And so when you bully mixed race people into you know, feeling like they're not enough, they're not black enough. It's like, surprise, motherfucker, you're playing into the same system that was created to divide us, you know? And shit, even when mixed race people were created on the plantation, it was for the very reason of keeping the rest of the black folk in check, making them jealous, showing them preferential treatment. Like, we were, we were used as tools. We're still black, still slaves but used as tools and i can't help think i can't help but think about it because i am in the entertainment industry and i'm very much aware of my privilege being a light-skinned 
mixed race black woman because I know very well that I am the kind of black woman that Hollywood would rather put on the forefront than a more than a darker skinned phenotypically unmistakably black woman because I am because white people would rather see me I you know on screen than than a black person that's less threatening and that's a disgusting privilege that you have to grow up that you have to come to terms with when you are mixed race and light-skinned you know racially ambiguous to to come to terms with the fact that you are this commodity it's just gross so it's dealing with that but also dealing with not feeling like you're enough in the community that you came up with and what i'm saying like i said i always talk about black women in general but i'm talking about my experience mixed race experience uh yes there are privileges that come with looking like me but at the same time we still go through racism nobody on the street is going to call me half a nigger you know what i mean and if there was a price of pain to pay if anyone come comes at me with you know asking for that receipt of pain unfortunately i can produce that receipt from all the shit that i went through in the air force and i would just point them to that playlist about what i went through i'm like that bitch that ruined my life did not see my percentages on 23andme or ancestry.com she saw a black woman and she treated me as such trust me the things that she said to me jesus christ and and so i'm like you know this isn't this shit isn't helping and there's definitely mixed race people that obviously use their blackness only when it's convenient for them like they really double up when it's convenient when it when they can bring them financial gain like you know there's certain celebrities that we had no idea that they were black to begin with ever ever always hit that like very obviously hit that but then the year that George Floyd was killed, all of a sudden you see them on the cover of a magazine and box braids, all of a sudden like, okay. Like it's one of those things like you know it when you see it. You definitely know it when you see it. And those people definitely exist and they're definitely out there and they definitely clowns. But there is nothing to be gained from going around and just revoking flatness from every single mixed race person that you see. They've been trying to say Cardi B ain't black. She's Hispanic. As if you can't be both at the same time. Fucking stupid. Fucking dumb. Uh, Janae Aiko. People trying to say like she can't say the N-word in her songs because she's only like 33, 40, whatever percent black on her 23 and me. As if we didn't know that this bitch was black the entire time. Like that has been very, very evident. And you know that this bitch has had black experiences. You know, it like it is really getting it's really honestly getting out of control. It's getting completely out of control. And it's like, what is there to gain? And who are you to, who are you to discredit somebody's lived experience and identity? And like I said, it took me a long time to completely love everything that I am. And the reason why I talk about blackness, blackness, blackness is because, and I told my friends this, that when I walk into any community outside of the black community, um, Unfortunately, no matter how much I have that belongs to that community, whether it's Native American, whether it's Hispanic, whatever, all they're gonna see is a black woman. At a certain level, at a certain level, all people are gonna see is a black woman. A light-skinned black woman, maybe a more palatable black woman, I'm not even gonna discredit that, but a black woman. And that is how I walk through the world. And so now at this point in my life, I am just shoving that part into my face because that is the part that the world has told me to hate, that my black father taught me to hate. And that's the part that I'm shoving into the face of the world. I'm like, no, this is the part of me that you wanted me to hate so much. And so guess what? You're going to hear about it. You're going to keep on hearing about it. And every mixed race person's journey with this is very nuanced because almost all of us have had that experience where we have been trained either by our parents or by society to, to erase our blackness, either for safety, to be more attractive, etc. It's very, very nuanced. But all of us, we, come to a, we all come to a point, hopefully, where we realize that no, everything that makes us is beautiful. 
and I'm not gonna let anybody in or outside of my community try to erase that part of me ever. Motherfuckers be writing essay long comments on my shit talking about you're mixed race, you're not black. And the thing is, it's a catch 22 because if you are mixed and you're like, I'm black, black people will be like, no, you're not black, you're mixed. Stop saying that you're black, you're mixed. That's where you belong, that's what you are. And so it's okay, well then I'll say that I'm mixed. But when you say that you're mixed, there's also gonna be a large population of black people that are like, oh, so you don't wanna say that you're black, you're ashamed of it. You don't wanna acknowledge that part, so you're just gonna say that you're mixed. You can't win. You really, really can't win. And so at this point in my life, at, at 28 years old, knowing that this is a very nuanced subject and there's different types of people with different mindsets on this, like you just gotta walk confidently in who and what you are because somebody's gonna be mad at you for existing <laughs> as whatever, no matter what. And so you just gotta walk confidently in who you know you are in what your lived experience is. And just be that. And that's where I'm at right now. I'm like, I fully accept it. That's good. There's gonna be a lot of people that don't consider me black at all. And there's going to be a lot of people that don't like me to say that I'm mixed. I don't care because both of those things are what I am. And my kids are going to have to deal with that too because they're going to come out half Asian and technically a quarter black. And I don't want to erase that part of them either. And so I plan on raising them to be proud of that part. Absolutely. And be part of that culture. But at a certain point, it's like, you just got to not give a fuck about what motherfuckers think. At this point, I'm like, anybody can say whatever they want about my ethnic background. I know who and what I am. I know what I've been raised in. I know what came together to make me and I know how the world sees me. I'm aware of all of that. And um, I, I just really don't care. I'm black, I'm mixed. And even if I didn't talk the way that I do or whatever, even if I didn't send out whatever signals I send out that I'm black, whether it's the sass or whatever, because I was never always this sassy. I was never always funny, by the way. But people are allowed to evolve. Um, and even if I didn't put out those signals, I'd still be enough. You can be mad about it. I don't care. Because it doesn't bother me. If my existence bothers you, then that's your problem. Not mine. Like Wanda Maximoff said, I don't need you to tell me who I am.